How's it going, everybody? Today, I want to go outside. We haven't been outside in quite some time. I want to show you something. We're not going to be actually building this today, but I think showing you nonetheless is more than enough information for anyone to go on to do this themselves. I've got these solar panels that I installed onto my shed. And the reason is quite simple because I wanted lights in here because I often have to go here when it's dark. And so this is nice. And the secondary thing is I wanted to have outlets here. Now I didn't feel like digging a trench and wiring it to my circuit breaker panel. So instead I just got this inverter so I can actually charge some of my tools right here in the shed. So for example, this big fat lawnmower, this, uh, this electric lawnmower, I charge it right through this inverter. So why don't we go up here and I'll show you what we got. Up here we have the four solar panel kit from Harbor Freight. Each one of these is good for 25 watts, so 100 watts in total. Um, all you do to install it on say a roof like this one, just screw it in. I just used regular screws, it has four screws, on the perimeter of the panel and goes right into the root, right into the shingles. And you can tell it's charging, it does have a blue light indicator. Not that anyone's ever gonna see it, but there it is. And they are connected to a controller unit through these four cables. All I did with these cables is I routed them through the soffit. You can there sort of see the hole that I drilled and try to manage these as best I can with some um, I hooks. Then it all goes into the sorts of rat's nest of cables. Um, so this is from one solar panel right here. It goes into this connector and if we follow it, it goes into this basically this splitter, this four to one, well I shouldn't say splitter, uh, let's call it a splicer. You can see here basically four panels, four cables, turns it into one cable and then that one cable goes here to this controller where it's labeled solar input. Now, what this controller does is it charges a battery, this regular lead acid battery. The lead acid battery, and it is labeled, you got the positive and the negative terminals here, and they get connected through these alligator clips to this battery. And I believe it's just a standard, you know, not necessarily a car battery, but a 12 volt, 35 amp hour battery and this controller basically takes the power that the solar panels generate up on the roof and it charges this battery from there you can do all kinds of interesting things with this controller one of them and this is one of the biggest reasons why i got this is i bought these lights here because i often go to the shed when it's dark it's night this is where i keep my toolbox i wanted a light and I didn't feel much feel like digging a huge ass trench all the way back to the house and messing with the uh, breaker panel. Instead, I have the lights right here and I power it all through solar. Like I said, this controller has all kinds of interesting functions. The most obvious one is you can charge your phone right off of this unit. Uh, you can power lights through it, but you can also power all kinds of things. Anything that can t uh, take 12 volts can be powered off of this and it will draw the power right off of this battery so long as it has enough juice left in it. But I also have one more thing here and that is this here inverter. The inverter is connected right to the battery once again through these alligator clips and I'm sure there's a better way to do this but I was lazy and it works so I don't really care. All the inver all this inverter does is it transforms this 12 volts DC and converts it into 120 volts AC. And what I use it for is I charge things like my power tools, this lawnmower, right off of this inverter and battery setup. I don't necessarily remember what the, uh, the watt, what the power rating of this inverter is. I wanna say it's something like 750 watts. Just what can you power off of this stuff right here? Well, that's going to be limited by several factors. The biggest one is probably going to be this battery. So 
So if it's a 35 amp hour battery, what that means in a real world application, in order to get power out of it, multiply 12 volts times 35 amp hours and you get, oh, let's say roughly 400 watts. This means this thing can supply 400 watts for one hour before it's fully drained. And that's what an amp hour means when they lay, uh, slap a label on these batteries. When it says it can supply 35 amp hours, it means it can supply 35 amps at 12 volts for one hour before it's drained. But I like to work in watts because it just makes more sense to me because that's how many other devices tend to be labeled. But remember, we're also going to be up against transformer losses. So if we are, say, using something like this inverter, that's going to have a transformer loss. All transformers lose power. Whether it's an inverter or it's a step-down transformer, it's going to lose power. It loses power for all kinds of interesting reasons like hysteresis, resistance, um, eddy currents, but it all mostly boils down to heat. And so a reasonable assumption might not necessarily be the case, but a reasonable assumption for actual loss will be 15%. So this inverter is actually going to waste 15% of the power coming out of this battery in order to convert 12 volts into 120. And so what does that mean as a real world example? So well, let's, let's pretend, let's talk about this, this lawnmower. Its battery is rated for 280 watts, okay? This battery can supply 400 watts, but we're going to lose about 15% through this inverter. So what's 15% what's of uh, 400 watts? Uh, 40 watts? 60 watts. Okay, we're going to lose 60 watts of power through this to heat. Poof, it's gone. We're left with 340 watts. So it can, theoretically, ignoring that the solar panels are charging it throughout the day, it can theoretically charge this battery right here once and just barely. However, because I am also simultaneously recharging this battery through the solar panels, it doesn't tend to be an issue because I tend to use this thing during the day and I still have sunlight to go with. Now to get around those kinds of limitations of, you know, is it going to be enough juice? Well, just get a bigger battery. Will the solar panels be able to keep up with it? Yes, it'll just take longer to charge. So in theory, what that means is with the example I have here, if this is a 400 watt battery and these solar panels in an ideal condition with perfect sunlight, which is never the case, are producing 100 watts at any given point in time in the most perfect conditions, like lab conditions ever, this would this should theoretically only take about four hours to charge, assuming no losses, which I think the losses should be fairly minimal because I believe the solar panels are producing voltage at 12 volts or maybe something a little bit greater, but are going through some kind of voltage regulator. But of course we are in the real world, so we've got trees, we've got clouds, we've got a sun that tends to <laughs> move around the celestial body. So it probably takes closer to 8 to 10 hours to fully charge an even small battery like this one, a 400 watt battery. So just keep that in mind. If I upsize this battery, then I can most certainly count on those four itty bitty little solar panels to take it several days to charge from no charge at all. Now let's ask, answer another question. Can you power little power tools off of such a thing? Well, why don't we find out? I got this bench grinder right here. I'm going to turn on my inverter. Let's see what happens when I try to turn this on. Oops. Overload. Can't do it. Well, this inverter, assuming it's rated for 750 watts, what is this rated for? We got 120 volts AC at two and a half amps. So that's 240, 300 watts of power. However, especially with brush motors such as these, they'll have something known as surge current. So when we turn this on, 
it takes a hell of a lot more power to get this thing started because it has to overcome the inertia of all this heavy stuff. So the reality is for maybe a split second or two, maybe like the first second, it's probably drawing something like a thousand watts of uh, power before evening out. So if you want to run power tools, you're gonna have to get a much fatter battery, an inverter rated for probably at least 1500 watts. And then on top of that, you probably won't be able to run it all that long either. We can, however, run this 60 watt light. So that's cool. And just out of curiosity, what about the scroll saw? This one's rated for 120 volts at 1.2 amps. And I don't think it's going to have a hell of a lot of mass to overcome here just to move this little thing. So it'll probably work. So it's really just needing maybe 140 watts of power and maybe a little bit more than that for that initial surge. Let's see what happens. No problem. And the draw doesn't even seem to be all that much. And so that's basically what I mean. With the right balance of, number one, enough solar panels, enough sunlight, a big enough battery, and an inverter that's rated for enough power, you can actually run even power tools off of a setup like this. And for me personally, it all really just boils down to me wanting lights in the shed and an ability to charge some of my power tools as I'm out here in the yard working on stuff. That's really all I need it for. And it's also nice to have a backup in case there's a power outage. You can probably charge laptops and cell phones on this thing. No problem. The last thing I've noticed the price i think for this whole setup so that's inverter plus battery plus the controller and solar panel kit plus the lights i think i paid something like 380 dollars maybe 400 dollars and of course two hours of my time can you add more solar panels i believe the answer is yes this is labeled with a solar panel so if you have more to add, as long as they're rated at the same voltage and all that stuff, and I think generally they are, this is where you would add it, into these two terminals. And that's about all I have for you today. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.